juvenile yet somehow mature. Hey guys, this is my review for the latest DC Animated Universe film, Teen Titans, The Judas Contract. Now, this actually in some ways does follow the original 1984 comic, if I'm correct. Uh, it does have Deathstroke and the Terra character. It also does have Nightwing as a part of the Teen Titans. However, there is a villain in this called Brother Blood who, to be honest, he's basically a Ronin in in all manner of speaking, I say Ronan because in Guardians of the Galaxy, everything's great about Guardians of the Galaxy except for Ronan because Ronan is as bland as a cardboard box. And pretty much Brother Blood is the main villain of this film, but he's not any, he's real, in terms of story, he doesn't matter. He's so boring in this film. What you'll care about most is the inner turmoil within the, t the new Teen Titans, as well as the relationship between them, Terra, and Deathstroke. The film takes place with basically the Teen Titans is kind of doing hero stuff. However, there is Deathstroke who's in the background who's kind of predicting the Teen Titans sort of moves and everything. We also see the relationship between uh, Nightwing and Starfire kind of mature, the move in together, all this stuff. Which is actually is so awesome about this is this is one of the few DC Animated Universe movies that actually talks about references and is connected to one of the previous ones. It really does link up with Justice League versus Teen Titans. There's references to this movie, there's even references to Son of Batman. I didn't like that one at all, but Damien does make a reference to when he kicked uh, Deathstroke's ass in Son of Batman, also kind of explains how he's back. But in terms of actual film, there is a cool concept with Terra. At first she starts off terrible, you will hate her. You don't like your character at all, but she slowly starts to have a unique concept to her and there is a conflict between her, herself, the Titans, and Deathstroke. And I can't really reveal anything more, but if you really look at the title hard enough, you'll be able to kind of guess what happens. But either way, the action is really cool in this, the humor is very, very good, uh, the voice work is exceptional, except for... Tara, I don't know, she's bad at first, but then she gets better. Um, there's also a kind of a sad note, but the actor who voices uh, Deathstroke, Miguel Ferreira, he, this is actually his last role that he voiced. He had done Deathstroke before, but he passed away at the beginning of this year, so I liked him in this. I think he was a good character, a good choice for Deathstroke, so I was happy to see him do this role one more time. The other thing that I want to point out is that this is proof right here that the animated movies don't need to be rated R. Because honestly, there was swearing in this film, there was a lot of blood because the guy named Blood bathes himself in blood. And I don't understand why they were so hard pressed to try and do R-rated films with the killing joke because that did not work at all. And then Justice League Dark, which to be honest, I didn't understand why it was rated R. I could see it as a PG-13 maybe. But all that happened for those two movies is that the animation suffered because of a lowered budget because of an R rating. I don't understand why they can't just do this because this worked. Admittedly, there are some animation issues. There are some cheap tricks here and there. The ending, there's something that happens with terror that's laughable because it's so badly done. But otherwise, the animation is good in this. The characters are well defined and I like the fact that this is a continuation of a previous DC Animated Universe movie because that is so freaking rare now. In the end though, I will still rate this as good as Justice League vs. Teen Titans, so I'm gonna give this film a 5 out of 7. The Judas Contract is a good animated universe film. If anything, it's a good turn back towards what we used to be. Hopefully they keep going in this direction. Mind you, Bruce Timm is coming back with Batman and Harley Quinn, so we'll see what happens. He didn't have anything to do with this film, but it's kind of been a mixed bag of how well the DC Animated Universe films have done without Bruce Timm's involvement. Either way, guys, that's all from me. Hope you enjoyed this review. See you guys next time.